Have you ever looked at the night sky and seen all those stars and wondered what is up there? Who is up there? Are there other people? Are there other beings living their lives like we are? Have you ever even wondered that maybe you have a connection to the stars? Well, I want to talk about that in this video and I want to give you a very easy, very gentle, very non-creepy and non dramatic introduction to our connection to the stars. You are divine. Thank you so much for watching. This video is the first in a series that I want to make and this is why I call myself the Cosmic Empress because we are truly eternal, infinite, cosmic multi-dimensional beings and that is a beautiful thing and it's not scary at all a connection to the stars i want to tell you how i see us the cosmos the soul and the stars and let's just start with the dimensions okay we're living here in the third dimension planet earth this is real. <laughs> that tree over there is a real tree. I'm in my backyard. There's a beautiful deer, mama deer, and a fawn right in front of me. I wish you could see them. They're so beautiful right there grazing. I just wanted to share that with you. As I was starting to film this video, I had our little friend who lives here just come and say hello. <laughs> He sleeps right in front of the fire pit right there. Okay. <laughs> Hello, baby. In the third dimension, so we are third dimensional beings merged with a fifth dimensional consciousness, our soul. And as we go higher in the dimensions, everything becomes less and less individuated. Everything becomes more and more one. And if you go all the way up to the tenth dimension, the tenth dimension for our frame of reference is God creator source, all that is, source energy. And when our soul was born, it was like a droplet coming out of the ocean, individuating from that tenth dimensional all that is, all is one creator source, like a droplet coming out, individuating itself, coming down more and more in the dimensions. And at the seventh dimensional level, we as a soul first became conscious of our individuality. We became conscious as a soul. Oh, we're, we're being. This is us. This is you. We're individual. Wow. We perceived ourselves as being an individual in the seventh dimension. And as we filtered down more and more, we came more and more individual and in the fifth dimension, and this is what we always talk about in spirituality, fifth dimensional consciousness, fifth dimensional angels, guides, the Akashic records exist in the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is that dimension above us where we exist as pure soul, as pure energy. That's why we are multidimensional beings. We exist in all dimensions simultaneously. And we can imagine us as existing from that 10th dimension all the way down to the third dimension. But let's concentrate on the fifth. So the fifth dimension is where we as souls, our pure soul, pure spirit, without a physical body. And then we became aware of, okay, there is a third dimension. There are planets, there are stars, there are places where our soul can actually merge with a physical third dimensional, real, tangible, with a different dimension and have an individual physical life. Where there's time, where, where time is linear, where we actually go, we incarnate, we live, we die and we leave again. So that's what we're aware of. Let's say we saw this at the, at the fifth dimensional level and we saw that there are beautiful different places where we could incarnate. Planet Earth. Maybe a different planet here, in a solar system here, in a galaxy here. 
I mean, obviously, there are many different places in this galaxy, many different third dimensional places. There's planet Earth. We know that the other planets are there. There's our central sun. There's the galaxy, the Milky Way with all the other planets and stars. And we know those are third dimensional. So as fifth dimensional beings, we had this huge kind of smorgasbord of third dimensional planets and reality and places where we had the opportunity to incarnate. Because like I said, we're multi-dimensional, beautiful divine beings with choice and free will and we can go wherever we want and do whatever we want. So what happened? We decided, we decided as a beautiful soul, we looked at the smorgasbord and decided, okay, I think we're more matched. Our soul would do best to incarnate in this place maybe. Let's try that. And that place was not necessarily planet Earth, right? So, as the airplane goes by, so it's, I see it kind of like when you're living in your hometown and you're deciding to go for a trip, you, you, you take a vacation. There's not only one place, there's so many different places that you can go that you can decide to go on a vacation. You say, what is most matched to me? What would be more fun? Where could I learn most? Where would it be more ex most exciting and, and wholesome and, and incredible for me? And then you choose that place that you're drawn to. You go on the vacation, you come back. And that's a little bit of what happened before you incarnated. You're up there in the fifth dimension looking at this beautiful, this beautiful, colorful palette, buffet, <laughs> of different places and planets and star systems and you had the choice to incarnate wherever you wanted so you did that I did that every soul that is up there that has the opportunity to incarnate can choose where they want to and so let's say you saw a system let's say Let's take Sirius. We know Sirius is up there. Sirius is like a place in the sky. It's a system with several planets. It's not just a single one, several planets. It's a system. So let's say you decided, okay, Sirius, that civilization, that place is most vibrationally aligned to me. Let's, let's go, let's incarnate there first. Let's do our incarnational cycles there first, because usually when you come to incarnate on a planet, it's not only once. It's like you dedicate yourself there for some time, for many different cycles of life, for many different incarnations. So you decided to go to Sirius because that is the place where you felt most, most drawn to as a soul. So you go and you do everything that these souls do, you prepare yourself and then you decide to go for it. You jump in and boom, you incarnate on Sirius. And of course, every planet, every system has its own unique infrastructure, flora, fauna, people that don't look like this always, a little bit different. Some people call them aliens, but you know what? <laughs> Have you noticed that in some countries, foreigners are called aliens too? They're just foreigners, they're just people, but you call them, oh, these aliens have to be expelled. <laughs> That's how I see it. The different star systems and planets, they just have people on them. And if we call them people or souls incarnated or aliens, doesn't matter, it's the same thing. They may look a little different, the system may be a little different, but they are still people. There are still people there. And because they're not here on our planet, I call them star people. So imagine that you now are incarnated on Sirius and you're a star person incarnating on Sirius and doing your incarnational cycles there. Let's say you did your incarnational cycles 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 lifetimes and you're complete there and then back in the fifth dimension and you've completed your incarnational cycles and now again you look at this smorgasbord of all the different planets and of all the experiences you've had 
as a person on Sirius. Now you decide Earth looks interesting. Maybe I'll get a chance. Let me see. Let me let me, you know, make the arrangements. Let me see if I can do it. Let me see if there's a space, if there is a place for me for some more incarnational cycles. And then you come to the fifth dimension over planet Earth, you make your arrangements and boom, you are here right now, the person that you are, incarnated in a human body in your first incarnation. So, in this case, you are a human being living this experience but in reality, you are a star person. You are a star seed. You've heard those terms. You're actually a beautiful star person. You're a star seed that has lived on another planet. And now you're incarnating here in this human body looking like this. So it's funny when people talk, are there aliens amongst us? I kind of laugh and I say, well, you know, I think most of us have lived incarnational cycles on other planets and now we're here, we are here so aren't we all aliens? <laughs> aren't we all star people? Don't we come from the stars and isn't that a beautiful thing? So if you think about it, you know, all those discussions of, you know, making spacecraft or do you see spaceships in the sky? Are there aliens here? Do they exist? We are star people and we're all connected. And we've all lived in different places in different times. And one of the rules of planet Earth is when you incarnate, you forget. There's the big birth amnesia. I call it birth amnesia. When you're born, you forget all that. And we know that before we come here and we agree to it because we need to, really focus on our life here, on the here and the now. And it's a privilege because we are at our most individual when we're incarnated in three-dimensional reality. We are most individual, we are completely autonomous, we are kind of cut off from everything and we can just have a fresh new experience of life and that is a beautiful thing. But also knowing that you are connected to the stars and you do have star heritage and you are a multi-dimensional star person. I feel that is such a beautiful thing and that makes me relish this, this very individual and cut off experience as a human being even more because at a deep level, I am connected. And when I look at the stars, I know I am connected. I come from the stars. The sky is mine. The universe is mine. <laughs> and we're not alone here. We're not cut off little people just living one life and then we're dead and that's it. No, we are beautiful eternal star people. And that's one of the things that I want to explore with you on this channel is our star heritage, our galactic heritage. And I think it's such a beautiful thought. I think it's, it's an amazing thought that we come from the stars. I mean, who doesn't look at the stars with wonder and think, wow, that is light. Light is consciousness. There is consciousness out there. I feel connected. The stars are beautiful. The stars are inspiring. And when you look at the stars and you feel that wonder and that inspiration, it's because you feel that connection because you are part of all of that. You are a star person, you're a star seed. You're an eternal multi-dimensional multi galactic star being living your life right here, right now on planet Earth. And I think that's a very comforting thought and I don't think that's really creepy, do you? <laughs> Let me know if you think that's creepy. So I hope that makes sense. And if you haven't really thought about any of this, if you're like, wow, that's too much for me, that's okay. Just take this as an interesting story and just file it away for another time where you might want to re-examine it again. But I don't feel creeped out by that thought. I mean, if the propaganda that is perpetuated 
like the aliens, the greys, and you see this picture of an alien, of course that's creepy. But if you think about your beautiful soul, which is made of light and consciousness, having the ability to incarnate in different experiences, in different eras on Earth, and in different places in the galaxy, being able to incarnate in the stars. I mean, that's amazing, don't you think? I think it's pretty amazing. And I think that thought is comforting and exciting and makes me feel more connected. What do you think? Let me know, let me know. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I hope this has made sense. Let me know because this is a process that we are doing together and I feel that I'm going on this journey together with you in this new channel, trying to explore the roots of who we are, why we are here, how we can live our best life as a divine being, right? Okay, thank you so much again. Natasha, your cosmic empress.